There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise ships do it I go wild. Car 54, where are you? Sorry, Francis. Uh, never mind. If I'd have known that that guy who was double parked back available was wearing only a bikini, <laughs> I'd have never asked you to give that ticket. Forget it. Well, it's a good thing I noticed it, and I threw myself in front of you. It was very embarrassing. Well, it would have been more embarrassing if you'd have seen her and maybe fainted. <laughs> Francis, after all, I'm a married man. Look, Gunther, I'm over 21. Francis! Hey, Marty! How are you? How are you, boy? You're back in the Army. Yeah, but look, I don't have too much time. They call me up for six months in the reserves. I want you to keep an eye on my girl for me while I'm gone, huh? Sheila? Yeah. But that's silly. Look, Francis, I know you don't take notice of these things, but Sheila's a gorgeous girl. Oh, I've, I've noticed. There are plenty of wolves around just waiting to make time with her. But why me? Why you? Francis, you're the only man in the world I trust with a woman. <laughs> Come on, how about it, huh? Okay. Gee, thanks, Francis. I can sleep nights now. I'll give you a call as soon as I get a leave. So long, Francis. So long, Marty. Take care. <laughs> I heard him, Francis. And that's a real compliment, asking you to keep an eye on this girl. Some compliment. That's the fourth friend of mine who went in the Army who paid me that compliment. Why not? If they ever called me back into the army, and I was worried about my wife Lucille being chased by guys, I... My wife Lucille being chased by guys? What am I talking about? Come on. Uh, Muldoon. Yes, Captain. A group of girls from Vassar College are visiting the precinct Wednesday. It's their annual social study field trip. Muldoon, I want you to show them about. Me? Yes, yes. They're usually a group of very attractive girls, and, uh, I knew with you there'd be no incident. I understand. Uh, usually headquarters sends a retired officer, Inspector Klein, to show them about. Lovely man, 82 years old. <laughs> when I found out he couldn't make it, you were the first one I thought of. Naturally. Uh, just show them about to answer their questions. Captain, did it ever occur to you that, well, I might find one of them attractive and, well, ask her for a date? Come on, boy. Wednesday. <laughs> For Pete's sake, Sylvia, I tell you, I'm just going bowling tonight with the boys. I'm not having a secret rendezvous with Marilyn Monroe. Forget what you hear in my sleep. What do you mean I have a roving eye? I haven't looked at another woman since the day I married you. That cured me. <laughs> prove it. I'll prove it. Muldoon is coming along. Yes, he is. Wait, wait, wait. Francis. Francis, will you tell my wife you're coming bowling with us tonight? Hello, Sylvia? Yes, this is Francis. Yes, I'm going along with the boys. Thank you. Another compliment. <laughs> What's that, Sylvia? You got some couples coming over for bridge next Friday and you need another couple. All right, I'll ask my mother if she can come along with me. <laughs> Goodbye, Sylvia. Thanks, Francis. You see, as long as you're along, the wives know there's gonna be no fooling around. I know. You're like the good housekeeping seal of approval. <laughs> Say, Francis, I just saw the captain. He said it's okay for tomorrow night. What's okay? For you to take over my night patrol. Now, wait a minute. Francis, it's Saturday night, and you know I've always got a hot date on Saturday night. Forget it. Francis coming over to my sister-in-law's house with me and Lucille. I thought he was coming over to watch my kids. It's Saturday night, my big night. Now, wait a minute. Hold of you guys. Did it ever occur to you that Saturday night might be my big night, too? Your big night? To do what? To go out. Out? Yeah. That, that, that's right. I'm single. I'm over 21. It's Saturday night. Yeah, I may just be taking a certain party out in the town. Well, bring her along. You know your mother is always welcome. I don't mean my mother. I mean a girl. You? With a girl? A real girl? You mean a girl girl? That's right. A regular Saturday night date with a girl. 
Do you mean a hugging and kissing girl? Quiet. I don't like that kind of talk in front of Francis. I'm sorry, Francis. It's just that us married guys, we keep forgetting that there's an innocent single boy around. Innocent single boy. Gunther, will you cut it out? I'm tired of having the reputation of being the 53rd Precinct's official mama's boy. Look, you can't help it if you're shy. Shy? Ha! Just because I don't go bragging about all my dates like some of these loudmouth Romeos around here, it may surprise you that I do all right in the female department. <laughs> Just so happens I got a hot number lined up. A hot number? You? Well, doing with a girl. That's... it's... What makes you think it's impossible? Impossible! That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> all right, you've had your way. Now, let's forget all about it. Oh, no, we won't. Got to stay out of this. If Francis says he's got a date with a hot number tomorrow night, he's got a date with a hot number. Gunther, don't start up. Look, have you got a date or haven't you? Now, Francis, we got to know. There are a lot of bets riding on this. Now, right now, at 6 to 5, Carolyn Kennedy will have a date before you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you had your laugh. Now, let's forget the whole thing. No, we won't. Gunther, stay out of this. I won't. The one thing Francis doesn't do is lie. He said he had a date, didn't you, Francis? If I said I had a date, then I've got a date. Yeah. I still don't believe it. Uh, Neither do I. Muldoon with a girl. There'll be nothing left to believe in anymore. <laughs> well, you can believe that. Gunther. Yes, Francis. You talk too much! That's the whole miserable story, Mother. After I shot my mouth off about being such a ladies' man, Gunther made such an issue of it, they had me boxed in. The upshot is the whole precinct thinks I've got a date with a hot number tomorrow night. How exciting. Do I know her? Mother, you haven't been listening. There isn't such a girl. I haven't got a date. Brother, when the guys find out I was bluffing, I'll be laughed off the police force. And after I open my big fat mouth about having a real swinging Saturday night. You are going to have a real swinging Saturday night. I am? Francis, have you forgotten? We're going to Aunt Martha's tomorrow night. She's showing us the movie she took of her trip to Yellowstone Park. Mother, that's not the evening the boys had in mind. I've just got to get a date. Where's my address book? <laughs> Every bachelor has a little black address book full of numbers. Look what I've got. A, Acme Cleaners. B, the Bronx Stamp Club. C, oh, here's something exciting. Charlie's Pizza Palace. D, Dolores Davis. Dolores Davis. Who's that? Oh, oh, it, it's, it's, it's just a girl I met at the Stamp Club. Francis, why don't you call her? Oh, oh, she just gave me a number in case I ran into a 1912 Panama Canal anniversary stamp. Francis, if she gave you her number, she expects you to call her for a date. You, th you think so? Of course. Call her. You sure? Of course. She did seem interested in me. She kept peeking over my shoulder at my airmail collection. She's probably nuts about me. Hello? 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 I couldn't do it, Mother. There's something about a girl's voice over the telephone. Francis, you just got to get over being so shy. It's no use. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I know. Why didn't I think of it before? I'll kill myself. Francis, I don't want to hear such talk from you. Killing yourself is no solution. You'll live to regret it. Who wants to live? Mother, I'll just have to make those boys believe I got a hot date for Saturday night. But that's being deceitful, son. Mother, it's for my own good psychologically. If I start acting like a wolf, and they start thinking I'm a wolf, and I start thinking they're thinking I'm a wolf, then maybe I'll really become a wolf. Cha-cha-cha, 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 cha-cha-cha. Say, uh, thanks for the hair tonic. You sure this is the stuff that drives the girls crazy? I hope you didn't use too much. You'll get torn to pieces. Just a little bit. I'll let my big blue eyes do the rest. Cha-cha-cha, 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 cha-cha-cha. Hello? Is that you, baby? This is a recording. At the top.
show and the time will be 7.22 and one quarter. You guessed it. It's lover boy. I'll pick you up at eight. That's when the champagne will start flowing and the cha-cha chime will start. What's that, sweet? At the toe and the time will be 7.22 and one half. Oh, you little devil, you. <laughs> See ya. Yahoo! Has he got a date or has he got a date? Simmer down, Gunther. Make way for you. Where are you taking her tonight? Uh, taking her? Yeah. Where are you taking her? <laughs> Where does a guy take a girl like that on Saturday night? You mean the Chi Chi Club? You guessed it. Wow. Well, that's the fanciest place in the Bronx. Yeah. You must really have something there. Hey, come on. We're on duty. Oh, oh. What is it, Gunther? I just remembered. You'll let me use your car to go over my sister laws tonight. So what? So what? You need it for your date. Never mind. You use it. <laughs> but you got a date. Uh, Gunther, you take the car. Uh, so long, fellas. Wait, Fred. I'll drop you off there. Never mind. I insist. It's, it's just a short walk. A short walk? It's over three miles. Yeah, we ought to know. It's all settled. It's all settled. I'm dropping you off at the Chi Chi. It's the least I could do. <laughs> Come on. Here we are. Yep. <laughs> well, here we are. Gee, I can't get over it. You, Muldoon, out on a date. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for the lift. Uh, wait. What? I don't know what your father told you, but you've been living with your mother and your sister all these years. Yeah. Well, if there's anything you want to ask me, go right ahead. Welcome. They know all about the birds and the bees. Good. Oh, that's a load off my mind. Now, you go in there and have a good time, and I'll wait here. Thanks. You'll wait here. Well, in case she isn't there, you can come back out here and I'll keep you company till she gets here. Gunther, I'm sure she's there. Well, why don't you go in to find out and let me know. All right. <laughs> Uh, a reservation? Uh, uh, well, no. Mm, I'm sure I can find a table for you. Will that be two? Two? You expecting a young lady? A young lady? Oh, no, no. I'll, I'll just be here a minute. Uh, excuse me. It's okay, Gunther. She's here. <laughs> Who's here? Uh, nobody's here. Uh, it's all right. I can go now. Come again when you can stay longer. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Have you ever... Oh, it's you. Nice seeing you again. Are you planning on staying longer this time? I, I don't know. Please, sir, just give me a minute. The minutes pile up after just so many of them. We have a color chart, you know. Are you staying? <laughs> I haven't made up my mind. Mm, when you do, let me know. I'll call the owner and we'll all have a drink on it. Chichi Club. Who do you think you're kidding, Dennis? You're not going in there to check their license. You are going in there to check on Muldoon and his date. Ah, this is a big event. There wasn't a guy at the station from the captain on down who didn't come up to me and say, find out what she looks like. Come on. I'll take care of it. Good evening, sir. Have you? Uh, I've changed my mind. I'll just sit at the bar for a while. I think you've had enough for one night. Good evening, sir. Yes, officers. Can we see your liquor?